This is Nine News with Peter Overton. Good evening. The government hits the road this week on a blitz to sell its budget with a focus on jobs. Political editor Charles Croucher joins me from Canberra. Charles, good evening. The unemployment rate has never been so low in Australia, but the government still has two big problems. The first, helping those who've fallen into long-term unemployment. Yeah, Pete, this is something that the Treasurer has described himself as a passion, something he thinks is becoming entrenched in certain communities, like his own community. Uh, he grew up and it represents the area of Logan where there is a higher unemployment rate, and he thinks there's $200 million the government has put into the budget to try and target those specific areas and work with community leaders, with education and training providers to try and get those workers into jobs. At the same time, the Coalition has announced their own policy. They want to extend the amount that someone can work while on job seeker before that job seeker payment is affected. They want to stretch that an extra seven hours a fortnight, an extra $150 a week that, uh, fortnight. That would take it up to about $300 a fortnight before that job seeker payment is impacted, regardless of who is right. That is a key area. And the second problem, of course, and we hear this all the time, mm -hmm. is that small business and large companies say they can't get staff. How do you reckon the government can fix that? Well, that is goes hand in hand with the first problem, and it should fit together. The issue is there are communities where people are unemployed, and there are industries where they need people to be employed, and we can't marry the two at the moment. If the government or the opposition can get that right, that will do huge things, not just for the workforce, not just for the economy, but for those communities as well. It is shaping as one of those real issues that there is a difference of opinion, but also goodwill on both sides of politics. Pete, this is an area that that both sides can work together and hopefully with some really positive results. Good on you. Charles Croucher, our political editor, thanks for joining us, as always, on The Late News. Thanks, Pete. There have been moving scenes today on the cliffs of a South Australian beach. Family and friends gathering to remember Simon Bacanello, the victim of an horrific shark attack. Shannon MacDonald has more for us from Adelaide. Shannon, so many tributes today to the popular school teacher. Well, Pete, family, friends and the wider Elliston community on the south, on the west coast of South Australia are today coming to terms with this tragic loss. 46-year-old Simon Bacanello is feared dead after he was attacked by a shark while surfing yesterday morning from sunrise today. People have been returning to the scene, paying tribute to this much-loved teacher. And while day two of the search efforts resumed this morning, words of love and admiration for this well-loved local have continued to be shared. Take a listen. He was a one of a kind man. The way that he um, made other people feel um, was testament to his character. Took a lot of time out of his own time to help other people succeed, and which was yeah, he was, he was one of my favourite school teachers. Now, the family today have also released a statement saying they're grateful for the support of the Elliston community, family and friends as they process this tragic loss. Now, so far, only part of a surfboard has been found with a bite mark in it. Police say they'll resume the search for Simon at first light tomorrow. Pete. Shannon, thank you. Melbourne is fast attracting the unwanted title of Australia's neo-Nazi capital after wild protests shut down the city. Nine's Mimi Becker reports tonight from State Parliament. Mimi, there are calls for politicians to act. Yes, there are, Pete, and to act quickly and, in fact, immediately. But the reality is that a ban on a Nazi salute could still be 12 months away. Neo-Nazis clashed with police and counter-protesters here on the steps of State Parliament for the second time in two months. That Nazi salute was performed multiple times at Parliament as well as through the streets of our CBD. Police and politicians were quick to slam the rally as cowardly and disgraceful, but Premier Daniel Andrews has committed to banning that Nazi salute, but he concedes that it will take some time. Any legislation to, to ban the Nazi salute has to be carefully calibrated from the Nazi swastika. That is now uh, punishable by up to uh, $22,000 fines and 12 months imprisonment. But then again, that took the best part of uh, six months to a year to enact. Once these particular groups are outlawed, law enforcement will have all the resources at its disposal to deal with this craziness. 
Now, after the rally yesterday, Pete, two men have been charged with assaulting police and they'll have to face court at a later date. OK, Mimi, thank you. To a developing story now, there's a manhunt in south-east Queensland tonight for three inmates who've escaped from a low-security prison at Rathdowney. Antonio David Mean was serving three years for illegal use of a motor vehicle. Osaya Pilton had been jailed for break and enter, while Daniel Badcock was serving time for weapons offences. Police have asked the public not to approach the men if cited, but to call triple zero. One man is dead and another is fighting for life on the Gold Coast following a series of suspected drug overdoses at two separate homes. The man in critical condition now confirmed to be the brother of NRL Broncos star Payne Hass. Nine's Bailey Kenzie has more for us. Two men, including the relative of rugby league star Payne Haas, tonight remain here at the Gold Coast University Hospital after a suspected overdose. Paramedics are understood to have attended an address in Gaven where they found one man aged 19. A short time later, they're understood to have attended a separate address in Arundel, finding two men who were also rushed to hospital. One of those men identified as Jeremiah Lalea sadly died with tributes for him flowing in. One person posting to Facebook, we are completely devastated and trying to navigate our way through this news. The Gaven address is registered to the parents of rugby league star Payne Haas. The Brisbane Broncos say that the club is aware of the incident but declined to comment with Haas himself not being involved. Police could not confirm the exact nature of the death but early reports indicate this was the result of an overdose from the drug GHB. A report is being prepared for the coroner. OK Bailey, thank you. More than a year after some of the worst flooding seen in Australia that affected the people of Lismore in New South Wales and indeed around the Hawkesbury closer to Sydney, tonight a promise to build a national warning network. Let's go straight to Nine reporter Massilia Eiley in Sydney. Massilia, good evening. This is breaking news. How will this warning network take shape? Pete, for several years now, local and state governments, particularly in flood prone areas like here in New South Wales and in Queensland, have been calling for a national solution to our flood detection network. And now the Albanese government has tonight revealed it's come up with that solution. $236 million over 10 years to fix the way we measure flood levels. That money will be used to purchase and upgrade high priority flood detection devices that are currently owned by local, state and territory governments. The government sought advice from the Bureau of Meteorology when developing this plan and they said that work in Queensland should be prioritised due to the high flood risk to the community there. As for how the money will be distributed across the state and territories, Pete, I'm sure we'll hear more from the government tomorrow. Marcelia, thank you. A Nissan SUV has been squashed under a truck trailer following a crash in Sydney's west tonight. It's believed the driver drifted across the road at Wetherill Park, clipping another car before the collision. The man somehow managed to remove himself from the vehicle and remarkably was treated on the scene for only minor injuries. Cleo Smith's parents have revealed on 60 Minutes tonight their daughter is still plagued by nightmares in their first interview since her kidnapper Terence Kelly was jailed. Cleo strikes me as a girl who's always in a hurry. Always. <laughs> Look, as long as she's running, jumping, dancing, she's happy. Here she goes. <laughs> yeah. Cool. She does have a lot of good days. Um, she's such a happy little girl. Does she ask you questions about those 18 days when she was away from you? Does she talk about it at all? She knows that a bad man took her um, and he's in jail now, so she's safe. Her nightmare nights are the worst nights. Yeah. yeah. And they still happen? Yeah. Yeah. How frequently? Oh, every week. Must be hard to see a little girl scared. Yeah. What do you do to try to make her feel safer? Um, yeah, give her cuddles, yeah. Reassure her that everything's fine. Sneak her a few chocolates. <laughs> yes. <Yeah. laughs> She's got your measure. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> Kelly is now appealing the length of his 11-year sentence after pleading guilty to abducting the four-year-old and hiding her in his Carnarvon home back in 2021. You're watching Nine's Late News broadcast across the country. Next, the world's largest refugee camp evacuated amid a weather emergency. Plus an inside look at America's migrant crisis. Families risking their lives 
for a better future. And could this be the last time Australia competes at Eurovision?